Hi, my name's Grady from FTC Team 21525. This video will walk you through troubleshooting an unresponsive Rev Driver Hub touchscreen. This means that the device will turn on, but it doesn't respond to your finger. Typically, this is caused by a loose cable somewhere in the device, and fixing this is as simple as pulling the driver hub open and then plugging that cable back in. All right, so let's get on to the fixing. So the stuff we're going to need for this is we're going to need a screwdriver of some sort. You can have one that's swappable. Um, you're going to just need a 00, zero Phillips head. Uh, if you don't have a 00, zero, you can just use the smallest one you have. That'll be fine. And you're going to need a 2.5 millimeter Allen head. Now, any Allen key works just fine for this. You're just going to need it to take off the battery. Or it might be a 2 millimeter. It does vary rev box to rev box. Um, they switch screws occasionally. Anyway, 00, 2.5 or 2, a standardized Allen key set in metric will get you through. You're going to need tweezers of some sort. This will just make the job easier. These are, you know, fancy nylon tipped, but you don't need those. You can, of course, use, you know, uh, like hair trimming tweezers. Those are fine. And you're going to need a spudger just to get that case off. You can also use any kind of like flathead screwdriver, just as long as you're nice and gentle with it. This one's plastic, so it does help. I like to have, um, especially on, on dark surfaces, I like to have a sticky note or something bright. It's going to have high contrast on the screws, so I can just easily find them and grab them. And that's all you need. You can skip a couple of things here and there, but generally, this is the stuff you're going to want to do this properly. So step one is to remove the battery. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Use our Allen key. And twist it out. Take our screw, put it aside, make sure we remember where we put it. And I'm just going to use tweezers here just to get in there and pull it up. And if you're having some trouble like I am this time, sometimes you can't always get under there and, and just pull it up from the back. You can always just nice and gently rest it over, lift it up slowly so you don't drop that battery. These guys are a little temperamental, so try to be as careful with them as possible. So now that you've pulled off the battery case, you've set the battery and the back panel aside, you can move on to the four Phillips head plastic screws in the four corners. So you can switch your screwdriver bit We'll take the Phillips head, we'll put it on the first screw, take that one out. Take this one out. So now all four screws are loose. This will can just slide off. If it's not sliding off for you, you can always go ahead and grab your spudger, give the side a little bit of a little bit convincing. Don't be too harsh on it. Just go back around and make sure all your screws are all the way unscrewed. There might be a little glue or stick in there, so gently pull it. Now, you'll see that this the port side, make sure the port side is you're pulling it open like this, because that's the way the cables are connected. It will not want to open the other way. And so you'll notice that this one has this cable loose here. This is the touchscreen cable that, that gets that touch input. And this is just the normal screen cable. And it plugs into here. If it's not loose like this one is, just completely wild, uh, it might just be not set properly in that locking connector. Those guys do tend to come loose when you drop them. Next, we're going to put in the cable. And the cable's really important. It's just the, it might be here, it might be here. You're going to want to pull this connector. If it's not already so, pull it out, just on this little black piece, so that it is out you'll see that there is a little bit of 3D geometry here. So we have the, the PCB, so the board that the, the circuit is on. Then we have the bottom little recess, this black retaining clip, and then the top. We want the cable to rest on the bottom recess and go into the white bit. So I'm going to grab my cable with my tweezers. I'm going to make sure that the bottom is nice and close. This thing does not like to be all the way open. We're going to pull it in, push it in. If it's not convinced, you can always just kind of get a little bit of a lip there and, and nudge it in ever so gently. 
And then we can go ahead and, of course, lock it back down by pulling on that black part with our fingernail or the tweezers. So make sure that black part is all the way back there. And then make sure it's nice and snug and it's not going to pull out under gentle pressure. I'm just giving it a couple light taps to make sure it's not, not moving around. It feels nice and stiff to me. So then we're going to go ahead and close our rev board back up. And I just make sure that all of our screws are still in the back. Good. Nicely make sure all those edges are aligned. If they're not, you can pull it back up and try again. But make sure those edges are nice and parallel to each other. Gently flip it over. Since we didn't take out these screws and we left them in here, they'll still be there. If they're on the table, go ahead and pick them up and just put them back in. They're all the same. So you can just go ahead and back screw those guys back down. Get it snug. Don't, you know, over tighten it. But just, just get it to the point where if, if it's on a, you know, a, a soft, grippier surface, it just starts to turn the entire hub. That's plenty of tension. Let's go ahead and screw that one back in as well. Okay, now we can go ahead and put in back our battery. We're going to want to switch away from our Phillips head. We won't be needing that anymore. And we'll switch back to our Allen key, 2 or 2.5, whichever you need. You can always just try them with the screw. We're going to want to take the battery, make sure the contacts, these three gold plates right here. We want to make sure that these are facing away from us so that the text on this panel here is upside down. Point these facing away from us and then push the battery into those contacts align with those four gold pins right there. And we also want to make sure our Rev Robotics logo is up, and we can also see that plus and that minus just to show us the battery polarity. Now we're going to take our black back panel. We're going to see these tabs here. That means that we're going to have to slide it in like this, make sure those tabs get nice and flush, and then just drop it back in. It's like any kid's toy battery. Drop in our screw. Go ahead and snug up our screw. Same procedure as for the others don't get it super tight you can uh, accidentally tear those threads out that's not a good all right so we'll go ahead and flip it over we're going to go ahead and hit power we should see a boot up screen if at this point you don't see a boot up screen uh, make sure that battery is properly set try plugging it in make sure that it's properly charged and um, if you didn't if you had touch screen problems before and doing this procedure caused you to lose screen contact at all you can always go back and make sure that that second connector is the exact same, that it's all the way locked in there. And if uh, that fails, I would recommend that you contact Rev Support. But this is relatively easy and quick to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and test the touchscreen by swiping up. And it looks like ours is functional. So that fixes our problem. Um, and that's all you need to do. But of course, if this doesn't work for you, you should always contact Rev Support. They will go ahead and help you out. Uh, this is Grady from Team 21525, and I hope you found this useful. And if you have, there's no need to do anything for us. Just go ahead and have a nice day.